Hello everybody, this is Luca from GSI. I'm here to show you how to install the top paddles on the Hyper P1. So this is what the four paddle configuration looks like. So if you're upgrading, you should get two shifters with the switches pre-installed, two paddles, these are unique from the clutch paddles, although they look very similar. And then uh, some low cap screws. I believe it is 10 low cap screws. Now to disassemble this wheel, you're going to need a couple of things. First thing being the 1.5 millimeter hex, a T6. I have a power driver here that's optional. The bits are what are important. A uh, 2 millimeter hex, a T10 Torx, and a T25 Torx. So, first thing you want to do is turn the wheel to the side and start removing the top multi switches. So, if you look underneath, there's actually what we call a grub screw, and we're going to angle the funky cap forward and just start unscrewing that counterclockwise. You can leave the grub screw in there just so it doesn't fall out uh, and you don't want to lose that. Next thing we're going to do is remove the what we call ear screws. These are the two smallest screws on the face of the wheel. There's only two of them and they're at the top left and top right corners here. And now when we do this, we want to be a little extra careful, uh, primarily because the faceplate here is aluminum, and if you scratch it, then, well, you don't want to scratch your wheel. So, those are the two ear screws removed. Next up is the T25. Now. I have a power driver here. This is completely optional. Uh, and in fact, a manual one may be better for initially loosening up these screws. I may actually have to go grab just a, just a good old manual one, but we're going to see. So I'm going to set the torque to the max setting. Let's see if this comes out or not. Okay. No problem. So there's four of these. Two on the left, two on the right. Now we're done with our T25 bit. Next up is the T10. This is like the medium sized one. There are six that we remove. Uh, the ones that we're going to ignore are these four. So the ones closest to the screen. So one, two, three, four. Don't touch those. That's not what we're going to be removing. What we do want to remove are these three. So one, two, three on the left and the one, two, three on the right. And I'm going to lower the torque setting because before I forget when we're reinstalling the screws, I don't want the power to overwhelm the screw and then I break it and we're left uh, having to fix all that. And I'm trying to stay a little organized here, just separating them with these little dividers I have in the silicone mat. Again, being a little extra cautious just not to to make sure that I don't scratch the face. And if you're following along with this, upgrading the Hyper on your own, I say welcome. Don't be nervous. It's not as difficult as it may look. It's actually quite simple. You just have to be aware of what's required and uh, everything involved to get your wheel disassembled and upgraded. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. Uh, next part here is going to be the most exciting, I'm sure, for many of you, which is when the faceplate actually 
starts to come loose. And so when it freely comes loose, there should be no tension, no resistance. If there is, double check that you've removed all the screws. But when you get to this point, what you want to do is turn the wheel up facing you like this. The clutch paddles actually are very handy for kind of leaning the body back. But as you're removing the face, just slowly kind of peek forward. And uh, I like to remove these two side ones. There are three cables that you're going to disconnect. And uh, these smaller cables here, uh, these two side ones, there's a little latch or a clip that uh, on the inside here. And so I'm going to go pinch that, remove one and remove the other. And now I remove those two first because the USB uh, internal lumbar cable here is a little longer than those. So I can bring this face further away. And that's important because if I'm too close to the buttons here and I tug it and I, I slip, I can risk hitting these buttons and damaging the switches on the uh, button board PCB. So that's why I recommend just remove these side ones first and then we can safely pull that. So there you have it. That's a disassembled Hyper P1 face and body. So next thing, and again we want to be very careful here, we're going to remove these button boards. Now you could get away with routing the uh, top paddle shifters like this. And you could see here we have access to these two. And if you had like a small enough Allen key, you could access it like this without having to remove the whole button board. I'd say don't do that. If you're uh, not comfortable, you'll want to play it safe here. Uh, we're trying to make this as uh, easy as possible for everyone. So um, another thing I recommend is before you disassemble or uh, remove the button board PCB is to actually remove these buttons. And the way that could be done is to just pinch it at the very base and give it a straight outwards tug. Uh, if you are worried about damaging these buttons, just don't uh, don't do that. <laughs> uh, uh, but if it's it's risky either. What I'm trying to say is it's risky either way you do it. So if you're pulling it, make sure that you're pulling it straight up. But if you don't and you just want to disconnect the button board, uh, then just be sure not to hit these attached buttons from the side. That's what I'm trying to say. So in this case, I'm going to undo these buttons one by one. And uh, what's fun about this part is if you wanted to, you could reorder them in any way you'd like. So I guess that's a little pro tip there if you are just wanting to customize your wheel a little bit. That's the way to do it. All right. We have all our button caps off and now we have the low cap screws. This is where our two millimeter hex bit comes in and attach it and torque setting is good. And so there are four of these on each button board. So we're going to remove them one by one here. Now our bit here is very tightly fit to the uh, screw head, so it sometimes gets stuck. That's one side. Uh, when you get here, you can disconnect these, you just give them a tug and uh, there you go. That is your free 
Piper P1 button board. Now you don't have to do this, but if you want to make navigating the internals and plugging everything in, it will be a little easier rather than having this kind of dangle around. So I'm going to put this aside and now remove the right side. So I could very well leave it like this, but just out of the sake of muscle memory, I like to flip the wheel around and access it this way. Uh, Whatever is comfortable for you. I do build wheels here, repair wheels here at GSI, so I'm very much in kind of builder instinct mode right now. So if uh, there are th certain things that I do, like flipping the wheel upside down, um, there's always like some sort of a reason for it, and I'm sure half of it I'm not even fully aware of. So uh, if you catch anything I'm doing here, then uh, we could just call it habit. All right, so button board on the right is free. And now the way I disconnected it before, you didn't actually see what was happening. So I'll just show you on this side before I do so. Uh, I just flipped this around, uh, but I, I want to show you this is how you disconnect it. You just give it a, give it a pull, easy. Okay, <laughs> we are almost at the uh, halfway point. Actually, I think we are at the halfway point here. So we're going to now grab one of our shifters. There is no right or wrong orientation, so either side works. We're going to start with the left here and route it through the cutout. And then we're going to grab the low caps that you should have gotten if you purchased the two uh, paddles off the website. And I like to pre-thread them just so that when I go in with the power driver, it's caught correctly on those threads. I don't want to damage anything here. So holding it from the back, pushing upwards into the body. I'm just going to drive down those screws. And uh, if there's anyone watching this live on Twitch right now, I do not see the chat. Uh, this is purely for educational purposes and it will go on to YouTube so I'll catch you guys another time all right so same thing and and again so I just flipped the wheel around just out of habit but I find it to be a little easier this way working with uh, left hand acting as a support and the right hand used to actually thread things through. Makes it a little easier. Alright. So it's as easy as that. Now we have the two top paddles installed. Now while we're here why don't we go ahead and flip the wheel around making sure that we don't pinch any of the cables. And when you purchase uh, the top paddles for the Hyper P1 if you had four to begin with and you're upgrading you'll have the choice of aluminum which is what we have here or carbon fiber. In this case we have aluminum to match the rest of the wheel and so that's what we're gonna do. And so again, one screw and another pre-threaded. Uh, the correct orientation is always with this little notch facing downwards. Same thing with the shifter or the uh, clutch paddles here on the bottom. It's kind of the easiest way to remember. And if for whatever reason you have these paddles uh, or you're just having fun disassembling things. These are not interchangeable. The uh, thread, uh, the screw holes are further apart on the top paddle here. So these are not interchangeable. Just a quick FYI. Um, you don't want to damage the part of the wheel there. 
So here go the top paddles. And again, flipping around. Notch facing downwards, This, in this case up. Because we flipped the wheel around and two more. All right, look how cool that looks with all six on there. And now the reassembly process. So we're going to grab our button boards here and let's start with the left one. So what I like to do just to make the uh, cable connection part of it easier is I flip the board. So if it's on the left, I flip it over to the right. And then we're going to take the top shifter paddle cable. And you could see there's one, two, three connectors. These two in the bottom are close together, but that is indeed two. And this is the one that is new to this wheel, which we're going to be adding to the top. So you just push it in until you feel a little bit of a click. And now that is connected. Now we're going to be mindful of the other cables here. And just place that straight down. And uh, I like to kind of hold the board flat like this. You can hold it by the thumb encoders. And I usually go top screw bottom screw and just so that the fitment is a little better sometimes uh, there's tolerances in these things uh, we try to make it as precise as possible but sometimes you'll have this thumb encoder maybe be a little hard to turn either one of them and so we flip the board uh, we flip the wheel upside down and we pull the board inwards to the wheel while screwing down and that just ensures that there's no like scraping or rubbing of the thumb encoders all right so now that those are uh, secured we can put in the remaining two And take your time here. You want to be careful around these switches. Be gentle. If uh, you aren't, these are very easy to break. When the wheel's disassembled, you're like, you're performing surgery on it, right? So you want to be as cautious as possible. Um, fully assembled, though, don't have to be so cautious. All right one button board done. Gonna flip this around and remember what we said one side flip it over to the other that just makes the connection part of it easier so you can see what you're doing and I have it prepped here so that I can screw it down. If this is a weird build method and I'm confusing people I'm very sorry but I'd struggle to do it any other way <laughs> if I uh, if I didn't follow what is now just muscle memory. Top and bottom in, and make sure that board is being pushed inwards. Okay, so now it's secured so we can move on to the final two here.
Okay. And we're almost there. Now we got to install the buttons. So that's very straightforward. Just a matter of pushing down. You're done. So we're going to go back in order here. You don't need to apply a crazy amount of pressure. They go on quite easily. Uh, kind of like a fun engineering sort of thing. When we were getting these buttons made, the initial ones were so... The tolerances were so tight that sometimes it would just uh, rip the entire switch off. And so when we got these and they were a perfect fit and they were easy to put on and take off, it, we were just like, hallelujah. It was such a good feeling. Um, fun little fact there. So now that the buttons are in, final thing before we fully reassemble this is we take our bottom cable here, the Lumberg, internal Lumberg connector, connect that to this part of the main board. And for this part, because these these cables are shorter, we'll want to prop the wheel up and connect it like this. And now we're safe to move the whole thing all together and start putting back our wheel. I'm going to go with these M5 screws. There's four of them. And we're going to switch out to our T25 Torx. And I'm going to up the torque a little bit for these big ones because we want them to be tight. And what I'm doing here is feeling the part of the carbon fiber and aluminum to make sure that this surface is uh, relatively even on each side just so that the alignment is off. We don't want the carbon fiber to be over or under. It's usually a non-issue, but that's just a habit uh, I picked up just to be 100% sure. Now we're going to switch over to our T10 for the six smaller screws. And again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure we're on the lowest torque setting. And even on the lowest torque setting, I kind of let go just before the end so that it doesn't just snap the screw head off. Just uh, being a little extra cautious. This felt so quick to do this little uh, video here. And finally, we have our two tiny little baby screws with T6 heads and those go into top left and top right. And we have a Torx T6 and we're just going to drive that down by hand. Give it a little last half turn there at the end. Make sure it's snug. And that is an upgraded Hyper P1 with six paddles. So if you guys have any questions, any feedback, feel free to leave it in the comment section of the YouTube video. We're going to try and do a little bit more of these sorts of videos uh, just to educate you guys, uh, answer frequently asked questions, that sort of stuff. And uh, I, I, I lied to you. I forgot the caps here. But nonetheless, 
leave those comments. One and a half mil hex. Snug. See, I got so excited. I thought I was done. I'm celebrating here. Now we're done. All right. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the little uh, educational video stream here. Um, and again, feel free to leave any feedback. This is the first time we did anything like this. Uh, that's non-Jose. So I hope it, 